Some thoughts by Ildegarda Scheidecker and Maya Bucher on the occasion of Karl Bucher's exhibition Early Works and Hope, held at Plutov Gallery, curated by Roman Plutov and Romeo Bucher in Zurich 2019. My father Karl was a traveller, working in his own duty to explore and liberate the human being and its surroundings. He belonged to the Swiss avant-garde during the 60s and the 70s. Later he became a zeitgeist, being awake and compassionate about the actual domestic and international political events. From today's perspective, his works became universally valid and in its own sense they form part of a cosmic whole, a healthy relationship between human beings, earth and all creatures has been very important for Karl Bucher, as he was terrified by injustice. Initially, Karl Bucher was studying law at the University of Zurich, when in 1960 he made the acquaintance of my mother, the artist Heidi Bucher, born Adelheid Hildegard Müller at the legendary Café Odeon in Zurich. The two married soon afterwards. Their meeting proved to be a wondrous stroke of fate. Having embarked on his own career as an artist, Bucher soon found a personal artistic idiom which was of greater clarity than that shown by most of Switzerland's art practitioners at the time. His affinity with the avant-garde was demonstrated in particular by his early and political work, which is under discussion here. In one of his first key works from 1962, Bucher treated my brother Indigo's pamper like a relic, working it into a duffy mess of resin and oil paint. It is a gentle tribute to life, the planet and the universe. Karl Bucher's love of the landscape, the structure of nature and evidence of the human led him to lay trails in his earthworks and make his imagery more legible. Walking into the main gallery's room, we can see Karl's probably most significant, timeless and testimonial work. A group of 15 so-called petrified figures gathered together as a group standing on sand and with a meaningful title called Hope. To speak in his own words, he did not want to judge, but to show, because he was fully aware of the destructive nature of human beings, but equally firm in his belief that they are also capable of mobilizing the positive energy required to implement a future with a free choice of potential prospects. Like the war memorial in the room before, which specifically addresses the brutality of war and terror, they initially reflected real political events, but simultaneously symbolized destructive action in general, such as deliberate ecological catastrophes. Perhaps he was referencing the past of growing up during World War II in the safe haven of neutral Switzerland, being very much aware of the actual drama of the Vietnam War and surely also on a personal experience fraught by his separation in 1974 from his moose and sparing partner Heidi. Some of these thoughts and experiences led to the idea of petrification. Yet the character of these works was revolutionary and rebellious, informed with a critic of system. Bucher wanted to land and to liberate. He quite literally silted up his series of political art objects, layer by layer, by hurling sand at them from the floor of his studio. Stepping into another room, we can see the very optimistic series called Invitations, 
shown first at Gallery Bruno Bischofberger in 1967. Organic and nonetheless ordered ample configurations are set against the somewhat unusual light blue of the pictorial sky. Bucher took inspiration from the relic encased in a protective shell. After four engrossing successful years in Canada and California with important museum exhibitions like at the Musée d'Art Contemporain in Montreal or the LACMA Los Angeles County Museum of Art, some in collaboration with Heidi Bucher, because of her invitation for a solo show at the Kunsthaus Zurich and representation of Switzerland at the Sao Paulo Biennale, the family returned back to Zurich where Carl set up his studio again. In 1963, he drove to Florence in a van with a small, growing family to see one of his first exhibitions held at the Galleria di Santa Croce. This trip inspired his vehicle motif. From then on, this omnipresent symbol of mobility was inscribed in his work, leading to his famous landing series. The word and work title landing also refers quite literally to being down to earth, united with Mother Earth and its inhabitants, a trajectory that naturally confronted political issues as well. Concluding that Carl's figurative series called Hope seemed to acquire inner strength. At rest, they seem to symbolize great strength of character. Their passive resistance cannot be broken. Here we have a formula for the universality that Bucher spent a lifetime trying to achieve. At its core stands his own existential humanitarian attitude. Karl Bucher kept reinventing this goal for himself, researching forms of expression and materials that would reconcile human beings with the earth and soil of their existence, so that they might flourish in freedom and peace.